Hey, welcome to part three of my series on how the reckless home fabricator <clears throat> can create their own expansion chamber pipe without breaking the bank or hopefully your arm. So anyway, as you can see, we covered in the first two videos the machines to roll the cones and cut the cones and blah blah blah. I'm not covering welding them together because I am not qualified to instruct anybody in the art of welding. You just have to practice, practice, practice like everyone says and you know seek help if you need it. There's plenty of classes available, plenty of YouTube videos, but I gotta tell you the in-person classes would probably be the way to go. But anyway, so you see this one is already cut and mitered. This is the fun part because what we are dealing with is a tapered pipe, the whole thing tapers all the way to the end of this one. And there's one little straight section. This is the final section before it goes in to the engine. And that needs to have a flare put on it. And I need the nut, which I don't have yet. It's on the way in the mail. And so I can't weld this on, but I'll put the nut on first or I won't be able to get it on. So blah, blah, blah. So here it sits. Anyway, so how do we figure out how to duplicate the downpipe and create the proper miter we need? Well, I'm sure there are plenty of mathematical ways to do it and People who do this for a living, like people who work on pipe organ pipes, which I used to do, um, will know how to do it. And but what I did, here is a scrap down pipe from the same bike that I got probably on eBay or from a junk sale or whatever. You know, but it's the right pipe. So I want to duplicate this downward bend a little bit further on the down end because this midsection is a lot fatter than the midsection of the other pipe, and you want to clear the bottom of the engine case as it goes under. So, what I did was I took and I drew the profiles full scale on a piece of poster board and cut them out in separate sections. This is the initial straight section, and we leave that straight. So the other two cones we have to miter are the secondary section, the first diffuser, and then the second diffuser. So this part, you don't have to touch. You can just weld those up and you're good to go. But, so what I did, like I said, I drew them up and then I kind of laid the pipe over it and decided how much I had to miter each one. And you basically draw your line and cut half your angle. It's really important. You want to maintain your center line length. That is the important thing. So you can't just cut a piece out and throw it away. Every piece you cut out has to go back in somewhere. It has to go back in nicely so you maintain that same straight line distance. So now you'd be surprised how easy it is to just eyeball this. And you're working with poster boards, so who cares if you screw up a couple times? By the time you, you know, I got mine right on the second try, believe it or not. It came out pretty darn good. If you look at how this lays over it, I mean, come on, how much better than that do you get? It's a little bit, yeah, there we go. See, I'm like right dead on center with it. And it does fit on the bike nicely. I've already had it mocked up against it. So, so here's your first miter. And then these two, that's where it mates together, right between the first and the second cone. Very slight difference in angle here, almost indiscernible. And then here's your second elbow. And I wrote down the degrees there because I actually cut this one apart and taped it back together again, then cut it again because I was just a few degrees off. So, and I just made a note of what the angle was. I had a little protractor that you can use to get the angle with. It's like a made it together in the middle and you just kind of open and close it and it points to the angle. It's actually good for finding your center line of, uh, of stock too. You can use a protractor head from a square or whatever. And, uh, but you know, you gotta make sure you have your center line drawn in so you can maintain that all the way. But anyway, so that is how this was created. Now we're cutting a taper. So you can't just take your jigsaw and rest it on here because then you'll cut your line on an angle. And you could, if you wanted to try to be fancy, you can change the angle of your foot of the jigsaw to match the tape or the pipe, but I don't trust that. As my uh, particular jigsaw, you know, you can crank that thing as tight as you want, and I don't, that thing does not always stay put. And also, you're going like this. So even if you put it on the right angle, you're going like this, you gotta do a lot of careful math to get that just right. So the best thing to do, I found, is just uh, weld the whole pipe together, every piece straight, like this one here is welded together and still one piece. This is the first one I made and it came out like crap because like I mentioned in the earlier videos the uh, cuts 
were not straight, so there was a lot of filler and all these welds. They're kind of ugly. I had to grind a lot, and I got like halfway through grinding it down. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do it myself and see if I can't make these cuts better. And also, you can't tell from here, but this ends a little bit not in line because he hand cut the radius, which resulted in not a perfectly square surface to the center line. So anyway, I'm using that as my, as my example pipe. So, so that was just a practice one. And, you know, it's not that totally ugly, but it's just, you know, that one's a lot prettier. Anyway, so how do you lay your lines out on this? I like to make sure the weld seam is 90 degrees, which is over here. So you can kind of just eyeball that, or you can make a mark with your center finder on the either end here. And then to get the point of your first miter, you can actually hold your cutout piece up to it, and you're going to mark the beginning and the end there. And then you flip it over, go to the back side, and mark the narrow end, beginning and end on the opposite end of it. And you want to get a nice straight line across that. You can't just run a piece of tape over there. It'll start following the contour. It won't be a straight line. And they try to follow what you're cut. It's not going to work out well. So what do we do? Here's what I did. I have this wonderful thing here called a laser level. Now, these are not cheap, which does not jive with the general theme of my series here. This was probably about 150 bucks, but it's a good one, and it only lights up when the beam is level. So one thing you might want to check when you got this thing in your vise, you can hold it by the dwell section, which is nice because then you got a square means of holding the pipe. I tried cutting my first one with this part loose. It's a pain in the butt. There's nothing, you got to either clamp it to the vise or rig up something to hold it. If, I found if you weld the whole pipe together, you can grab it by the dwell section and everything is square. And so you just hold it by that. You're not cutting this part, so you're good to go. So I would also recommend putting some wood pieces in here so you don't nick up your pipe and never really grind that out. This is my junk pipe, like I said, so I don't care. I don't have them in there. But I did when I did this one. So, so this laser level actually will cast a beam all the way across. And I'm hoping you'll be able to see it. I'm going to turn the light off, turn the beam on. And you can see that the beam, so if wherever your mark is, you hit this part of it, and you can look over your side, and you can kind of follow it through. And it comes out perfectly straight line. So you make sure your pipe is relatively level, because this thing, if you wiggle it, it goes out of level and turns off. So it won't show you your beam if the thing is too far out of square. So that's kind of a nice thing about it. And then with this, with that beam lined up to your where you need to make your cut, you can just take a Sharpie and just trace along the laser beam. And you can mark your beginning and your end with a fair degree of accuracy. Kind of wandered off there with the camera. And you can follow it over. Remember, we're going to... I'm going to cut this with a hacksaw. That's what I did. You can use a miter box if you have one big enough, which I actually just picked one up this morning after I did all my cuts. I found one at the ReStore for like 25 bucks. The thing was like never used. It's huge. And it's highly variable. It's got all the sliding bars on it and everything. It's really nice. And uh, But I've, I did all this with, with just a hacksaw by hand. I didn't even use a guide or anything. I have a lot of experience using a handsaw, cutting all kinds of things, because I you know, was a woodworker for a couple of decades, and we did a lot of on-site fabrication and hand cutting. and. So I'm pretty confident in my ability with a hacksaw. And I gotta say, my, my cuts came out nice and square. I just used this cheap little Ace Hardware store saw right here, and it worked fine. You just gotta start your cut slow, and once you break through, it'll go real fast. This is 18 gauge steel I'm using here. It's pretty heavy, but it makes for a stiffer pipe. And it's just harder to cut, and harder to roll, but easier to weld, because you got more, more wiggle room. You don't gotta burn the hole through it so quickly. But anyway, so there's that'd be your first cut, and then make your second cut and third cut and fourth cut. But what I would do, as you go along, check check yourself because if your cuts off a little bit, you can correct your path by adjusting the angle of subsequent cuts. So that's what actually what happened to me. My first cut came off just a little bit, just not quite sharp enough on the angle, so I was able to enhance the angle of the second elbow to get me back on course because you know when I'm going to roll a whole new pipe yeah, and you know it's not the kind of thing you want to just kind of whack away at you want to make sure you're doing it right all the way or you're going to have to make a whole new pipe and we see how long that's going to take so but once you get good at it you know 
and then you can just do the repeat the process with your second section and make your second cut and then third and fourth and fifth and sixth and so on until you have them all lined up and then you just flip them around set them up how you want and I just kind of tag them together with a couple pieces of tape tag them together and weld them up and then hold it up to the bike make sure it works make sure it, it misses the engine and everything and you know with that straight section I can always make fine adjustments I could even if this isn't, isn't right I can take the straight section and miter it a little bit and angle the pipe one way or the other so I've always got that little bit of wiggle room too well, yeah, the laser level is a really nice thing if you don't want to use a miter box or if you can't or, you know, if you don't have to, like I said, I didn't have to. I was able to just cut right through. In fact, yeah, I left the laser beam on when I was cutting and kept the top of the saw hitting the laser beam. So I knew if my, if I didn't see red on the top of my saw, it was going on a square. And you just watch as you go along, make sure you're staying on your line. You'd be surprised how easy it is to really just follow a line through a piece of pipe. And that way you can cut and miter the whole tapered thing. If this thing were um, just a straight section, it's got to be easy. You could just put it in a, in a metal chop saw and go to town, but because this is tapered, you got to take a little bit of a extreme measures and get a little creative here. But that's why you put it together, like I said before. You can hold it square by the dwell section. But again, the pipe wasn't made right to begin with. These aren't going to be square with your dwell section, which is why you know the layout and cutting shown in the first video is of utmost importance. So that way you've got a good foundation to work with as you go along. So anyway, I am still waiting for my uh, my ring nut to hold this on. Here's the bike sitting here on the uh, in the old rack. I just set the tank off to be sandblasted because the yeah, it was terrible. It's an old tank. This is a dummy motor. I actually got all these parts from various sources on eBay just to have something to mock it up with the actual motors out being ported by somebody more knowledgeable than I. But the uh, exhaust opening will be in the same place. You can see how this comes down and to it on to the side. So if we take our finished product here, remember it's missing that last section. So I'm just gonna go right there and line right up with that. And it's got a few more inches to go, but like I said, I've got that part. Just haven't welded it on yet. You see she clears the engine. Nice thing on the bottom. Here's where my foot pegs are going to go. I'm going to use the rear foot pegs. The front foot pegs are loop underneath there, and they're actually off getting cleaned up too. And I'm going to paint those. Anyway, so there you go. Looks like looks pretty clean, almost professional, which it certainly isn't. But hey, it should work. So anyway, happy building. Any questions? Let me know in the comments.